everybody and welcome to another video from Traction. The latest episode of our Assetto Corsa Competizione track guide series sees us head for California and the infamous Laguna Seca Raceway. This track is short, narrow, fast and requires a large amount of precision and confidence to extract the lap time. Being consistent is difficult around here with the punishing curbs and tricky braking zones, but hopefully we can help you find a rhythm that will see your lap times become more consistent and quicker in the process. The car of choice for this episode is the BMW M6. Its straight line performance and mid corner balance make it a great alternative choice for racing at Laguna if you want to avoid the slightly trickier Porsche. The Beamer also provides you with overtaking opportunities into braking zones, which is the only way of making progress around here in a race situation. Without further ado, let's show you the lap. So as you head down the short pitch straight, drift towards the left of the circuit through the kink to shorten it as much as possible. Just watch out in a race for some drivers sneaking out of the pit lane at this stage, rather than following the infield road. Trust me, it does happen. Drift right and be all the way over the circuit heading into the Andretti hairpin. Brake at the end of the kerb, shifting all the way down to first. For this corner, there are a few different ways of tackling it. I personally like to treat it as a double apex. Try and get the car in nice and early at first, running over the striped kerb on the inside. At this stage, you will likely still be on the brakes getting the car slowed down, and as you run over the kerb, you will probably push out slightly wide in the middle of the corner. If you've got your braking right, you should be able to be at the right speed to cut back in on the power and aim to hit the second apex. Run over the stripey curbing again, be careful to avoid the red sausage curb on the inside. Open out your steering and use the exit curb. Haul yourself back to the left, straightening the car in time for the braking zone. Brake just after the 2 marker for turn 2, with your left wheels on the kerb and change to second. Be careful not to brake too late here as you can easily run wide on entry. On the apex, make sure you use the stripey kerb but avoid the sausage kerb. Open out your steering and watch out for oversteer as you head for the exit. Stay over to the left as you head towards the next corner braking on the kerb and turning in just before the 1 mark. You can carry a lot of speed through here, just be careful yet again to avoid that sausage kerb on the inside. This one is definitely one of the nastiest on the circuit. If you hit the flat stripey kerbing midway through the corner, you will be able to get back on the power instantly and it will feel great. You will then naturally find yourself drifting all the way out to the exit kerb. For turn 4, brake with two wheels on the kerb just before the 2 marker. Turn in towards the end of the kerb, changing down to 2nd and using the banking of the corner to pull yourself in towards the inside. Avoid the sausage kerb on the inside, but put your left front tyre on the stripey kerb straight after it for the perfect apex. By this point you should already be on the power, using the camber to hold you in place. Grab third gear on the exit as you utilise all of the kerb. Turn 5 is a brilliant example of what I like to call a commitment corner. Getting this right will provide you with lap time and new potential overtaking opportunities heading up the hill. The key to this is to focus fully on getting the power down early on exit, which can be achieved with patience on the entry. Brake on the kerb between the 2 and the 1 marker, shifting down to 3rd. Turn in quickly as you pass the one board and get on the power before smashing the apex. Precision is vital as you need to hit the stripey flat part of the kerb whilst avoiding the red sausage kerb at all costs. As usual, practice makes perfect. If you can be on the power fully before even hitting the apex, you will gain speed and time all the way up the hill. Open out your steering and use all of the runoff area on the exit. Move to the left before the corkscrew, using the left hand kerb on entry to straighten your line for this very crucial braking zone. Brake at the one board and make sure you do so with your steering as straight as possible. Aim to go right over the top of the kerb at the crest of the hill and shift down to first. The car can understandably go very light here, so make sure you have your ABS set to cope with it. Use all of the apex kerb on the left, with two wheels on the green runoff area. As you drop down the hill, flip to the right, a short shift, and use all of the inside area on the right, which you will barely be able to see in reality. It's very much a case of trusting the road underneath you, and takes practice to get spot on consistently. As you get to the bottom of the hill, you should be positioned nicely to the right, and you will need this to maximise your run through rainy curve. As the kerb on the right starts, you want to begin moving left and dabbing the brakes to keep the car on line. If you can get in nice and early here, the camber of the corner will help keep you in, so that's why it's not the best to start too far to the right. You basically have to coast through this corner, being patient and modulating your pedal inputs to keep the car on the ideal trajectory. Aim to hit the stripey kerb at the apex, again avoiding the dreaded sausage. If you get your speed in line right throughout, you should be able to apply the power just before passing this apex, using all of the exit kerb on the right to maintain your speed. Make sure you keep your steering on and fire straight back over to the left. If you can do this in time, you can get two wheels on the entry kerb and straighten the car fully before turn 10. Brake at the 2 marker, shift down to 3rd and roll off the brake as you turn in. If you can carry the speed in off the throttle, the camber should be able to pull the car beautifully in towards the apex. Hit the kerbing midway through the corner and get back on the power as early as possible using the exit kerb as usual. Get back to the right of the circuit and start braking on the kerb just before the 2 board. Change down to 1st and be patient with your turn in waiting until near the end of the right hand kerb. Roll off the brakes as you turn in to get the nose into the apex without understeering. In terms of kerbs, you guessed it, use the stripey, avoid the sausagey. 
get the power down as you hit the apex and abuse all of the green runoff area as you accelerate back up the short pit straight. And that is a lap of the wonderfully flowing Laguna Seca Raceway. Now let's play it for you at full speed to give you a real sense of how it looks. Here is the lap time I managed to set in this video. We've also put up a couple of reference laps, these being AM, PRO-AM and PRO. AM represents a good time to set when you're first learning the circuit, PRO-AM is a good place to start if you want to race online, and PRO is the quickest kind of lap times you will ever expect to see around the circuit. Racing at Laguna can be challenging. You often find yourself in big queues with the cars in front blocking your sight into corners. It's very easy to misjudge turn-ins and clobber the curbs, so I'd always recommend focusing on keeping within your limits, rather than pushing too hard and overdriving. Normally around here, you will gain more from other people's mistakes than you will from your own moves, so bear that in mind and try to be as consistent as possible. To finish up, I'm going to do a 10 second summary of the key points for driving at Laguna Seca. Is it Seca or Seca? Use all of the road in two apexes through one, slow in and fast out for turn three, turn in late for four and use the bank and commit to turn five and smash the flat curb, cut the corkscrew moving early and maximise the camera through rain and do the same through ten while carrying the speed early on the brakes for turn eleven, don't miss the apex, smash the throttle early. So that's it from us for today. Thank you as always for watching and if this guide helped you improve your lap times, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget that if you want to see more of this, subscribe to the Traction channel and hit the notification bell to see videos as they're released. See you next time, and until then, keep it pinned, thanks and goodbye.